Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Flintstones, The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. In our last episode, we saw Fred collect the final piece of the time machine, and so now we've got it all together and we are heading to the future, so we can finally stop Dr. Butler and rescue Dino and Hoppy. You might wonder why the Great Kazoo couldn't just send us to the future directly, but, you know, if we didn't have to collect all the time machine pieces, we would have just gone straight to the last level, and that wouldn't have been much fun. So anyway, we're here in the future. As you can see, we've got these moving walkways and all these Jetsons houses in the background. So now, let's meet George Jetson. Hi, Fred. It's been a long time. How is everybody? What? Dino and Hoppy have been taken by Dr. Butler? That's terrible. He is notorious for being eccentric around here. You can see his lab over there. I would like to help you, but we have a serious problem at the company now, and I'm all tied up. Beware of the doctor, for he is a very cunning man. But I believe you can defeat him without much trouble. Good luck, Fred. Uh, yeah, thanks, George. Uh, we'll see you later And Oh, look how nice he waves at us. But anyway, let's get into this elevator and proceed upward. Ha, ha, ha. Welcome, Fred Flintstone. I admire your courage in coming all this way. Let's see how strong you are. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, shut up. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's watch out for these pokey things here. You could go under them, but I think it's easier just to jump over them, so we'll do that. And coming up here, we'll be using a trick that we're going to be using a lot in this level. That's using the fly command to cross over these gaps. The interesting part about the fly command is that it doesn't actually cost any coins unless you flap the wings. So if you just call the command and use it to glide over gaps like this, you don't actually have to pay anything, and you can cross these large gaps that otherwise would be very difficult or even impossible to jump over. So it's a nice little feature, intentional or not. We'll cross over this last gap, eat a burger for good measure, and here we are in the next elevator. These traps here are pretty easy to manage. Just keep walking to the right and you'll be fine. Now we'll use the flying command again. And watch out for these treacherous moving walkways. And one more fly for good measure. And that does it for this section. Into the next elevator and up to the next part of the level. Now as you would suspect here, we'll just wait for this hook to come over, <laughs> that was close, grab onto it and ride it across, and the same thing with this one, grab on and hang in there for a bit, and here we've actually got an enemy, a robot cannon thing, we'll beat him up, and that's the end of this part of the level, so, another elevator, and here we've got some more enemies, these jumping spring robots, they can be a little annoying if they, uh, jump on you too much, but not too bad there. Try not to get shot by all these robots, but luckily there's a heart container coming up shortly, just right up here. Or perhaps in this one. <laughs> My memory's a bit rusty, I guess. But anyway, we'll get into this elevator and proceed up to the last section of this level. As you can see, we're pretty high up here almost as high up as these Jetsons houses in the background. Be careful making these jumps here. And Now this part is a little tricky because you pretty much have to make a blind jump down to that platform. We'll watch out for these robots here. And as you can see they'll just dash out of the way so we can make all these jumps. One last flying jump for good measure. And here is the final elevator. So we'll take that upward and meet up with Dr. Butler. It's a surprise you've come this far from the Stone Age. 
Now I'll be your opponent myself. Alright, time to take down the doctor. Doctor's pretty easy, thankfully. All we have to do is keep hitting him with our club. Each time we hit him, it stuns him a little bit, so allows us to do a lot of hits in a row. And as you can see with this uh, form here, if we just stand in front of him and keep smacking him, he's stunned long enough that he can't actually do anything to hurt us, so it's pretty easy there. And now we're at the final form of Dr. Butler. Looks pretty impressive, but really all he does is slide back and forth. And when we drop five of these exploding eggs, that'll do it for him. Pow, 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 as it says. And let's just give him a couple more hits as he crawls off. Follow him to the right. And there you go, Dino and Hoppy delivering the final blows as Fred just kinda stares on. And Dino is, of course, very happy to see us, and we're happy to see him. Fred and the others who brought Dino and Hoppy back from the future city could safely return to the good old Stone Age. Alright, that was the final boss, which means the only thing we've got left here are the final credits. As soon as they'll start rolling, here we go. So anyway, Flintstones, The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. I'd recommend this game. I thought it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed making these videos, and I hope you enjoyed watching them. Now we've just got this lovely ending photo to look at. Wilma, for some reason, wearing her black dress. And we've got Pebbles and Bam Bam in there, even though they were never actually in the game, but whatever. And let's see, what else have we got going on here? We've got the Great Gazoo up there, sleeping in the air next to a tree. Dino and Hoppy just kind of chilling in the background. Not bad. We've got the Flintstones theme song playing, which is always cool. And lots of people made this game, apparently. And yet none of them seem to have first names. Kind of weird. Lots of people whose names I can't pronounce. And here we are at the final screen of the game. So that was the Flintstones. Hopefully you enjoyed it. So, until next time, this is the Masked Cobbler saying so long and happy gaming.